Praise the Lord, sisters. I am so excited and humbled to be right here at the dinner table with you all. Thank you so much for all those that have been requesting for me to teach. All glory to God. I am your humble servant today in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray that you will all be blessed. Amen. It is very interesting, you know, when I look around the world and see what's going on, especially how the enemy is really trying hard to push his agenda. Um, the agenda of do not judge, you know, um, accept us, you know, let us pray. Amen. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, bind my mind to your mind. Bind my heart to your heart. Let me receive your word this day. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for the word of God. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for power and authority. Thank you for the gift of teaching. Thank you for the gift of receiving the word. Thank you for faith. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Lord Jesus, I pray I will be a blessing to your children today. Put the words in my mouth. Let me be led in everything I do say, in thought and in deed. And thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Cover us in your holy, precious blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah. Amen. So, like I was saying, you know, it's just very interesting how the enemy is. We know the enemy is the God of this world. So, his agenda is to feed the people his doctrine. So, the other day I was basically sitting just having a late um, night dinner, you know, busy throughout the day. Just said, let me relax and we don't have cable in our house. We just have chose to not have cable in our home for quite some years. So we got internet. So I, I tuned in on YouTube and I once in a while watch, um, what would you do? And the Lord led me to this one episode and it was very interesting. It was of course an actor, actress with a daughter and the topic was basically about transgender, you know? And um, there was, of course, a transgender man who was obviously trying to be a woman. And there was the actress mother. And uh, of course, also that was a tr an actor hired, but he's real in real life, he is a transgender man trying to be a woman. And the mother and daughter were having lunch. And the transgender man was also about to have lunch seen the waitress pass by said excuse me where's the ladies room you know and the uh, of course the waitress uh, told him where it was and the actress woman with the daughter immediately said excuse me did I hear you say you're looking for the ladies room you're not a man you're not um, a woman you are a man you know and on this other side there was like a bunch a group of of people now they, they were not actors they were just there having you know lunch and they overheard the conversation and one of the girls got up and told the transgender man come with me you know and they went to the bathroom came back and the actress woman with the daughter stopped her and said why would you do that you know and she said I'm a Christian and in my belief we are accepting and I was like accepting what bible are you reading shocking shocking it was very shocking and she just said she she, she christians are accepting you know and um we're to love we're to love there's the word we're to love <laughs> very very interesting you know and i see this quite often you know um being in the Lord for quite some time, 14 years, glory to God. Um, 
is that spirit is really pushing itself heavy to even believers. Believers are becoming afraid to um, speak up. We got to remember that Jesus Christ did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. And perfect love cast away all fear. So we have to be bold. We have to be brave in these last days. We cannot whimper down and and receive the lies of the enemy because we got to remember one thing, sisters. The Bible says, if you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you on that day. So we have to speak up. We got to pray for courage. We have to pray for boldness. Even if we're going to look like the uh, weird one in the crowd, so be it. Yes, look weird for Jesus. Amen. Anything for Christ. Come on, after all he did for us. But let us turn our Bibles, Holy Scriptures, to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Amen. And let's go through this chapter and see what love truly is. Amen. But before that, before that, let us go to, um, where is it? John, 1 John 4, 16. So the letter of John, uh, chapter 4, verse 16. So hold on. Hold on to first, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, okay? Amen. Let's do it. Let's do it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John. First John. First John. First John. I said four, sixteen. Okay. Okay, first John, four sixteen. Hmm. Where are you? Where are you, John? Where are you, John? Where are you, John? There you are. First John four sixteen. Thank you, Lord. And it says in the name of Jesus Christ, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. That's right. God is love, right? And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So these fake Christians that act like they know what love is, but don't want to speak the truth and they would rather lie to a person, you know, what's the op opposite of love? Hate. So the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend and kisses of deceit are from the enemy. So when we don't tell a person the truth, we actually hate them. You got to speak up. So God here shows us what love is. Okay, God is love, and he that dwelleth in, in love dwelleth in God. So we have to dwell in love that God dwells in us. Continue verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect. See, love is made perfect. Back to that scripture. Perfect love cast away all fear. Perfect love. We got to pray for that perfect love that we're able to cast away all fear. Okay? Because remember, Revelation says, these two will be the first ones to be thrown in the lake of fire. The unbelieving, the unbelieving one, and the fearful. Yes, cannot fear, cannot fear. Sorry, verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, boldness, boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Mm. As he is, so are we in this world. Wow. Because the Holy Ghost dwells in us. He walks in us. And he helps us. He guides our path. You know, so in this wicked world, we're able to overcome the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes through the power of the Holy Ghost. And then we have boldness. You know, so in time of judgment, we're not going to be... We're not going to be ashamed, you know, because we stood up for Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 18, there is no fear in love. Here we go. There is no fear in love, but perfect love. Remember that? Perfect love cast away fear because fear hath torment. 
He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Yeah, that's deep. So when one fears, it means they have not been made perfect in love, tormenting, being punished by evil beings. You know, uh, many uh, believers that don't understand the power of the Holy Ghost in them. You know, when we give our life to Christ, God does not leave us toolless. He makes sure that we have all the equipments to fight the powers of darkness. So fear is one that tries to torment. I remember when I gave my life to the Lord, I was afraid of the dark, very afraid of the dark. And the Lord said, we have to overcome that. Of course, the Holy Ghost is always so beautiful, so comforting, so patient, so merciful. He really helped me overcome that. You know, I would not go in the closet without my husband. I had to be in the closet with my husband. And, you know, the Lord said, there are sometimes, there are times I want you alone because I have some things for you, you know. And it was, it was amazing when God broke that off me and I could go in the closet by myself. And just for another time, that's where I got baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire in the closet. You know, amazing, amazing testimony. Glory be to God. You know, so God broke that fear off me and filled me with perfect love to be able to overcome the torment of the enemy. You know, so we see here that we love him because he first loved us. Remember, he first loved us, and that's how he gave us the love to love him and to understand um, what he really did for us. So, no fear. Amen? No fears. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, please deliver me from the spirit of fear and fill me with perfect love, your perfect love, God. I don't want to be thrown in the lake of fire, Lord Jesus. So forgive me for being afraid. And I trust you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So 1 Corinthians chapter 13, let us go through this excellent chapter about love. Amen. So you got your Bible? I'm sorry, I didn't even ask if you guys grabbed your Bible. Let me be patient and wait for you to grab your Bible and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All right. Amen. You know, my husband has... The song the Lord gave him, it's a beautiful song. It's so beautiful. It, it goes like, love, 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 with love, with love. I forgot the words. It's like overcome racism with love. Overcome fear with love. Overcome hatred with love. Eh? It's a beautiful song. Pray for it. Lord willing, we should be having that pretty soon out for the glory of God. All right, we're there. Let's do it. In Jesus Christ's name. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. You hear that? So even if people speak in tongues, you know, but they don't have love, it's noise to the Most High. Lord, you're so good. I pray you, Lord. I wash you. It's noise. It, it doesn't move him. It's all just psh, noise, noise, noise. So make sure as you're growing in Christ, you know, if God blesses you with numerous gifts, numerous talents, never lose love. Because the greatest is love. Love, hope, and faith. What's the greatest? Love. Okay? So always remember love. And if you feel like, you know, you're, you're, you're starting to lose that love, get on your knees and pray for the Lord to fill you with his perfect love. Verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and, I, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Again, there we go. It's all about the love. You know, even though a person's gifted prophecy can prophesy, you know, they could see, uh, they can have understanding of mysteries, deep, deep mysteries, you know, and filled with knowledge. Remember the word of God says, knowledge puffeth up, but love edifies, you know. So we see that even though they can move mountains, their prayers move mountains, you know, their faith is strong. But if they don't do it with love, they're nothing. Mm. 
It reminds me of what Paul said. He said, uh, did he say, woe unto me if I do all this and at the end become a castaway? He knew, he knew, you gotta have love to serve the Lord. You gotta have love to help poor, poor people. Um, just love, 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 love is the best. Verse three, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profits me nothing. Here we go again, doing things to be seen, you know, for the poor, you know, and you know, one dies for the Lord, but they didn't even have love in their heart. Ooh, that's scary. That's scary. They die for the Lord, but they didn't have love. It profits them nothing. So love is very important in growing into becoming a child of God. You've got to have love. And the only one who gives that is Jesus Christ. Huh. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not, brags. It does not brag itself, is not puffed up. You know, it's a beautiful verse, so much to take in, you know. Um, charity suffereth long, you know. I think of a sister in the ministry, you know, she's been in the Lord for about 12 years, you know, 10 probably, sorry Lord if I'm wrong. And I have seen her really be such a strong uh strong sister in Christ with this, especially this verse. She suffered long in her marriage. You know, her husband is not a believer for now. Please pray for him that he becomes a born again, a born again um, brother that can help the wife carry the cross, you know, and she just prays for him. She fasts for him. She, you know, I'm not saying she doesn't have times that she's feeling tired, you know, and Times she's actually called and be like, come on, I need prayer. We, you know, I, I I can't do this. We all need that. Sometimes God allows that, that we can depend on, you know, depend on each other. Remember that scripture? Carry each other's burden, you know, carry each other's burden. We got to help each other. We got to carry each other's burden. And so to make it short, she, um, the other time she called me and, you know, we were talking and it was just wonderful news. I was hearing testifying how her husband actually has been praying with them, reading with them. I mean, hallelujah. You see, uh, um, persevering is, is a beautiful thing that Peter talks about it. We have to persevere. We have to endure, you know, we have to go through it because God has a reason why he allows certain things to happen. In, in our lives, you know, wives that are married to uh, husbands that are just lost, you know, persevere, keep on praying, keep fast, pray over their pillows, pray over their clothes of work, just pray, speak life, you got power in you, you know, if you're walking in the light and in the obedience of Jesus Christ, trust me, the Holy Ghost is firing himself in you to do amazing things in your household. Remember, ministry begins in your house. You gotta show the light of Christ. Sometimes it's tough. I know it's hard. You know, you're like, I do so much. I, I show love, but I just keep, you know, um, being put down by my husband, or I, I keep being put down by my my sister. You know, I keep being put down at a workplace, getting prosecuted. Continue showing the love. Continue being kind. You know, just. Don't give up. Don't give up because you will reap what you sow. You will reap. You will see. Look at our sister. She's seeing what she's been sowing. She's reaping it now. And I pray she continues to see the hand of God move in her husband's life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So be encouraged, sis. It's just for a little season. If you stay strong and you wait on the Lord, you shall mount up and fly. Amen. And you shall see results. Thank you. And so charity envies not. See, you cannot envy, sis. You cannot envy. If you see a sister, you know, so blessed in the Lord, don't envy what she has. You don't know how long she became where she is. Get close. Find out. Find out. How, how did you become so fired up? Don't hate. Don't envy. You know, we're in Christ. We're to love each other. We're to be happy for each other. Leave all that worldly stuff out there. When the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is love, joy, peace, righteousness. You know, I love this song. It says, righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Come on. 
Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's the kingdom of God. Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Don't you want to be a part of the kingdom? Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Amen. You want to be part of the kingdom. So walk in love. Don't envy. Don't puff up. Don't think you're better than another sister because you're more spiritual or you're more pretty or you got a nice house or you got a blessed life. Calm down, okay? Calm down and give God the glory and, and, and show others how you got there. Teach them. Amen? Teach them. Give glory to God in everything. Verse 5 doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, think no evil. There we go again. This is about love. Love does not behave itself inappropriately. You know, it doesn't seek its own. It's not easily provoked. You know, for instance, you know, you, you're at a workplace and some sister just tries to make your life miserable, <laughs> you know, tries to provoke you. She does things to get you in the flesh. She knows you're a believer, but the devil uses her to try to get you in the flesh. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to render evil for evil? Or are you going to hold your peace? Like the Bible says, a soft answer turn away wrath. Are you going to ask the Holy Ghost to help you? Pray inside. You don't have to be like, Lord Jesus Christ. You can be inside and do your prayer. You know, and ask God for wisdom and watch God fight for you. You know, God allows us to be in certain tests in our life for a reason. It's to mold us. It's to also expose things inside of us that need to come out. You know, so don't be easily provoked. Um, and don't think evil. Don't think evil. You know, and the Bible says, have the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. So if you have a mind that thinks evil about others, you really need to get in, in under the blood of Jesus and, and speak life over it. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, let this be the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Say that. You got power in your hands. Speak life. The Bible says, Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Speak life over that mind. Take charge. Cast down imaginations, as 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, going down says. Cast down the imaginations. They're not yours. The enemy comes and he whispers in the ear. You know, he's trying, and if a person falls weak and starts allowing those things, those whispers to flow then it goes in the heart that's god's throne you know you don't want to get there so learn to cast down evil thoughts and speak life in the name of jesus christ amen six rejoice love rejoiceth not iniquity not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth see we have to rejoice when we see our sister brother, whoever in the ministry, the Lord is blessing them. We rejoice. We rejoice in the truth. We rejoice in seeing uh, just good things happening to them, you know. Um, and if you see a brother or sister uh, struggling in their walk, you know, uh, what do you do? Well, do you pray for them or do you gossip or do you even take a fast, you know, say, oh, Lord, I see my sister struggling. Lord, I want to take a fast. That's beautiful. God loves stuff like that. He really does. That's a selfless character. You know, you're not enjoying watching them suffer. You know, that's that's not good. We're, we're, we're one body. Like Paul said, one body, different members. And if one member is hurting, all the members are hurting. We got to be there for each other. We got to care for each other. We got to pray for discernment to, to see when our sister is, is suffering that we are there for them and not rejoicing. We're not rejoicing in their, you know, what they're going through, you know. So overcoming iniquity is, is big. Iniquities is hidden sins, you know. Seven, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love bears all things. Love believes all things, hopes in all things, and endureth all things. Very self-explanatory. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fall, they shall fail. 
Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. See, love will never fail. Everything else that's been mentioned there, it will fail. It will come a time it will stop, you know. So, but love will remain. Love will remain because God is love, you know. Nine, for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Who's the perfect one that's coming? Jesus Christ, right? When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You see, here we go, Lord, just showing us that we have to graduate in our walk with him. You know, we cannot remain you know, on the bottom, just still drinking milk. Even Paul said, we have to stop eat, drinking milk and eat meat. You know, so it's important for us to uh, elevate in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. For I, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity these three but the greatest of this is charity remember we were speaking about that you know one can have hope one can have faith the strongest faith but if they don't have love charity it's really nothing and we see that charity is the greatest so my beloved sisters we went through first corinthians chapter 13 you know praise the lord um i pray that lord willing we will continue meeting at this dinner table and allowing the Holy Ghost to mold us more and more to become more like him, you know, because we have to understand that we are in war every single day. The minute we wake up, we are the first ones to wake up in our homes. You know, um, if you're a married woman, you're the first one to rise up early. Like the Bible says, you rise up early and you prepare, you know, so you basically go forth to war, you know, preparing the day. And if you're married, you, you know, when hubby wakes up, you go together, you know, double wham wham to the enemy, you know, and you have a prosperous day. And if you're a single mom, you know, you go to war, you're not alone. You got mighty holy angels. You got Jesus Christ, you know, and you got us praying for you in the spirit, you know, so just always remember this is a war. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. When you go to work, don't wrestle with that hateful worker don't argue walk in the spirit walk in love that your character will draw them to jesus christ remember that and your reward is in heaven remember a uh, hatred stir it up strive but love covereth all sins it's amazing it's the proverbs is an amazing book it's got so much wisdom in it you know Try to read that every morning, you know, every, like if it's the 13th, open Proverbs 13 and read and eat and take your time with it. And if you don't understand, come back later and sit again and eat, you know, so you're really, really blessed. Don't start your day without, um, uh, of course, praying, getting on your knees, covering yourself. And if you have a husband, covering your husband, children, cover your children. If you're a single woman, covering yourself and just Know that God is going before you, preparing your path for you. Do not fear. Don't, 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 um, don't be discouraged. Be strong in the Lord. Be courageous in the Lord. Be confident in the Lord. You know, because the enemy tries to cause us women to be so insecure. Those are all lies. Don't be insecure. You're very loved in the Lord. Look at yourself the way God looks at you. Get your identity in Christ Jesus and let the others out there see the Lord in you and you can share how God did what he did through your life you know and doing it all in love so my beloved sisters I love you and I thank you so much for your prayers for my husband and I and our boys in the ministry of Jesus Christ thank you so much we love you love you love you love you love you and I'm looking forward God willing to come and sit here again or probably be outside somewhere and and bringing something that God has placed in my heart. Amen. Let us pray. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for the word that I received today from your servant. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, you will bless me with perfect love that cast away all fear. 
that Lord Jesus Christ, you will bless me to have more patience, to be more kind, to be more like you, Jesus Christ. Help me to decrease and you increase in my life. Fill me with the joy of the Lord. Let me be in your presence throughout the day and night. For in your presence there is fullness of joy. Put the right words in my mouth, Lord Jesus Christ. That when I speak, people hear and see you and me, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for this word today. I give you the glory. I give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, don't let the devil steal the seeds that were planted in me today. May I be fruitful, more fruitful in my walk and relationship with you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Love you guys.